Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Crystal and I'm so glad that you stopped by. So I've been in real estate now for, I guess like six weeks, five weeks, six weeks. And a lot has happened in that amount of time. Um, I think the last time you saw me was like my after my second week and things definitely took a turn. <laughs> so that third week was interesting. Um, it was, I got to work with my first rental client, um, which I'm still kind of working with her. Um, things have kind of been put on pause right now, but you know, I got to show my first home. And so that was really cool. And I was excited and it went very well. So I'm just sitting in the car waiting on my client and waiting on the agent to get here to let us in. Um, it's a really cute and quaint house. I hope she loves it. There's a bunch in this area. Um, by the people who are running the place so if she doesn't love this one there's 10 million more just a little bit further out which i don't know if she's gonna want that but this is really cute quaint house nice quiet neighborhood um uh, but it is also like 10 a.m so of course it should probably be quiet but i hope she loves it so i'm just waiting so I'm at the property, I'm waiting on the agent to get here and my client, so it's a little quaint house. Um, except for the fact that she didn't, you know, she didn't go through with the home, but still, it was still a really great experience for me. Um, I took more courses and then I had a bit of a breakdown <laughs> doing like a dual career in real estate and working a nine to five has been the hardest thing because I want to put more time and more effort and more energy into real estate. I really do. But if this whole chunk of my day is gone and by the time I'm done with that day, it just, I just feel so depleted. Like I can't do anything else. It makes it really hard. And so when people say like, Oh, you know, you probably shouldn't do this part time. I completely understand what they're saying. I understand why they say it. I'm living it, okay? And it is not easy. And I was definitely feeling it that third week. Um, the fourth week, my grandfather passed away. And that took, that took just an unexpected turn. Um, and so I've been dealing with that for the last two weeks. He's been gone and it's been hard and it's been hard to like work and grieve, but he was one of the most hardworking men I've ever known. Probably one of the most hardworking people on this earth. Um, but he literally worked two jobs for almost 50 years. And, um, so I have his work ethic. I know it's in me. I know it's on both sides. I have it from my, from my grandfathers and my grandmothers and, and, um, I know that I had to get back to work. So I was still working during that week of his passing or the week after his pa passing because he passed away on a Friday. And um, I uh, showed a home to another rental client and did a virtual tour of a home. And um, I, so I've been mainly working with rental clients <laughs> um, and making content for social media like Instagram and TikTok, just quick things. YouTube is more long form. And so it's a little bit, takes more effort than I have to go back in and edit that video. Um, so I haven't been on YouTube, but I've been on the other platforms and just showcasing the homes that I've toured. Um, just trying to acquire like buyer clients um, and listing and sellers too. So that's where I've been <laughs> for the last, I guess, three weeks now. And um, I've still just been trekking and trucking. And what I've kind of learned to do is just take it one day at a time and do what you can do. Do do try to do more than what you can do, but understand that like every everyone has their limits. Certain days you might not be able to put in more effort than you are the next day or the other day, um, if that makes any sense. But life has just been really interesting um, and really interesting. But I think one of the most interesting things that happened happened yesterday. So I went and toured like three three homes, um, 
one single family, a townhouse, and a condo. And when I got to the condo, the door was already open. So I was like, okay, are there other people here touring the property? And I walked in and the guy was like, I set an appointment on showing time. I got the confirmation and everything. And so I walked into the place and there's a guy putting a lighting fixture in. I was like, okay, so they're, they're still doing work on the, on the unit. And he was like, no one spoke English. And I was just like, oh my God, I really need to get my Spanish up. And they asked me, was I like Lamar? And I'm like, no, I'm agent, an agent. And so he was like, I just, I'm, I told him I'm just here to like tour the property. He's like, okay. So then I'm touring the property. And the next thing I know, I hear another voice and I walk out. Um, like I walk into the bathroom, they're doing like, it's a hole in the ceiling. Um, I walk out and I see a guy and he's like, who are you? And I was like, I'm an agent. And he was like, are you supposed to be here? And I was like, I, I set an appointment to tour the property. And he was like, who did you speak with? And I was like, I said the agent's name. And I told him I put in an appointment with the agent. He was like, hold on. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm, I asked him, I was like, oh my God, is the home like off the market now or something? He was like, no, it's on the market. I was like, okay, okay. And I was like, I was just here doing a preview. And he was like, okay. So then I'm walking around and I'm standing around like, should I continue talking to him or should I just leave? So I was like, I just left. I just left. And um, he caught me before I could get in the car. And he was like, yeah, um, I have, I have, I was going to say the agent's name. I have the, I have my agent on the line. I was like, oh crap, he's the owner. So yeah, I got on the phone with the agent and he was like, yeah, that's the owner. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm in this man's house. And he's like, not expecting me. And he was like, did you put, it? he asked me all those questions. Did you put in an appointment? I was like, yes. And I got a confirmation and everything with the, with, you know, letting me know that I can get in through Supra. And, um, that was a very interesting interaction. It was, it was, I think I handled it very well. I wish I would have stayed around and talked to the owner a little bit more just to figure out like what kind of work they're doing just in case that's something I can say in, you know, my video or my content, but I got the hell out of there. <laughs> and, um, oh God, oh my God. So the first house that I went to yesterday it was a single family home, older home built in the 1950s. And it was had like a really, really quirky layout. I'll input some of the video here. I posted the video on TikTok, but I'll include a video here. So like it, it was pretty much like one side of the house and another side of the house. It's hard to explain. When you walk in, you walk into the living room and then you could either go to one room that's on, it's, it's a weird layout. But anyways, the home is a very, has a very quirky and weird layout, and it's hard to explain. But I'll just try to show you kind of what it looks like. And um, so what happened was I was in the house, and I kept feeling like I was being watched. Not in every room, and I'm a pretty, like, scary person. And so going into these empty homes um, has been... A little off-putting <laughs> a lot of the times and I have to like build up the courage and say no one's here you're the only one here and it's okay someone knows where you are um, know where the exits are <laughs> and know where the exits are because safety is a real safety is a really big deal in real estate and um, you're going into someone's home that you've never been in you don't know who could be in the home squatting or anything like that you, you just don't know if someone got in the house and is, I don't know. A lot of these places have security, like security cameras and things like that. So, but this house, I don't know. So I'm walking around the house and I'm kind of feeling watched a little bit, but not really. And I'm like, I've been in every room, like, but what I don't do is I don't open closets. I don't open closets in my own house. I'm a scary person, okay? I don't open the closet doors in my own house. So I'm not really going to open the closet unless a client is there with me and wants to see the closet. If the closet door is already open, that's another thing. But I'm not opening no closets. I don't want no surprises. 
So there were some closets that were closed. And I was just like, okay, yeah, man, I'll open those. So I get through the house and I'm like, finally, like grateful to be done with it. But there's a carport area that I wanted to showcase. And there's like a storage area in the carport. And I'm like, okay, well, the door is open. So I'm just going to go in. I'm going to use my, um, my little gimbal and like, just let it pan around. I don't even have to go. And I don't even have to go all the way in the room. I just let the gimbal pan the room. I muster up the courage to walk into the carport, which it's old looking. I'll include some footage too. And um, I get to the room, the storage room, and it's like looking like something out of a scary movie, okay? But it's in the middle of the daytime and I don't feel that bad, you know? I'm like, okay, I can do this. I'm being brave. I'm so, I was saying I'm so proud of myself in this moment. I pan the camera around. I don't even get to the... I don't even get the full room. I was going to try to go in a little bit more, but I heard ever so gently. Like a... <laughs> I can't believe this is that. But like a door creaking. Now, I didn't hit the door to the storage room at all. Where could that sound have come from other than inside of the house? Now, yes, I guess it could have come from a neighbor, but the neighbors are a little bit, you know, they're not so up on the house. When I tell you I got the hell out of there, I didn't look in the windows because there's a door from the carport to the house that has a window. And there's a room with the window facing the carport too. I was like, do not look in those windows. Get in your car and get the hell out of there. And that's exactly what I did. And I backed out of that driveway. <laughs> driveway as fast as I could so yesterday was a very interesting day very interesting day but that was the first home I toured and I tried not to be scared to go into the other homes and I wasn't um luckily <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> and then that last one I wasn't alone so but yeah um so that's been my last couple of weeks in real estate um my goal going forward is I would like to attend more open houses um, I want to attend open houses so that I can learn how to host an open house and hopefully by like my eighth week, hopefully I'll be hosting an open house and I'll get to talk to my broker about that. Um, but yeah, life has been lifing for real, like real hard. And I'm like on camera, no makeup, hair just barely brushed up in this bun, looking a mess, but it is life and, um, I'm just trying to do the best that I can, to be honest, and, and make my dreams come true and help people, you know, attain home ownership because it is attainable. And um, that's one thing that I learned from posting starter homes on TikTok in the last couple of weeks. I had a comment um, where she said, you know, thanks for showing homes that are more affordable and that is something that's a goal of mine. I want people to know that you can do this. You can you can purchase a home. It's not hard. It's not a hard process. It's daunting. It's tedious, but it's not hard. And so I'm definitely trying to help people understand that and let them know that and showcase that to them. And it's good to know that like that feedback meant a lot to me. So <sighs> but yes, I've talked long enough. <laughs> And um, so I'll kind of maybe add some footage at the end of the other homes that I've toured, especially my favorite homes that I've seen so far, both rentals and um, homes for sale. So thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next video. You guys have a good one. Here's another starter home in Smyrna, Georgia. It's a two bedroom, two and a half bathroom townhouse listed for $270,000. When you enter the home, you walk right into the living room. It's pretty spacious and can most likely accommodate a large sectional or multiple sofas. Before we go upstairs, let's head over into the dining room. On the way to the dining room, you'll find a cozy powder room. The dining room is perfect for family and friend gatherings you can easily open up the double doors and have a cookout. 
The kitchen has been updated in recent years with newly painted cabinets and new granite countertops. Right off the kitchen is the laundry room and pantry. Now let's head upstairs to see the bedrooms. This bedroom is 14 by 11 feet and has an attached bathroom and walk-in closet. The primary bedroom is slightly larger at 16 by 13 feet. It has a similar sized bathroom to the secondary bedroom, but as you will later see, the closet is on the smaller side. And here is that smaller closet. Here's another look of the living room. Now let's head outside to see the patio. Although it's not fenced in, it's still the perfect space for dogs to run around or kids to run around. It's also perfect for grilling out or playing cornhole with your friends. As we head out, if you or anyone you know might be interested in purchasing this property or any other properties, please feel free to contact me. Let's check out one of my favorite properties from yesterday. This is a two bedroom, two and a half bathroom townhouse in Smyrna, Georgia, listed at $244,000. At 1,424 square feet, this home is so open and spacious. Right next to the front door, you'll find an updated half bathroom. This home was built in 1986, and as you can tell, it has been updated over the years with that stove that everybody, including my mama, has. As we leave out of the kitchen, we come right into the dining room area, which is open to the living room space. This space can definitely fit a large sectional or multiple sofas or have separate seating areas. It's so spacious. Now we're upstairs, and right off the stairs is the primary bedroom. This space is definitely big enough to fit a king size bed. And then you have the bathroom with double vanities. The home is pretty turnkey, but you can definitely make plans to update it in the future. One of the many things I love about this home is that it gets so much natural light. Now let's head to the secondary bedroom, which is a pretty decent size. This second bedroom and bathroom is perfect for having a roommate or having kids who need their own bathroom. I love that this room has two closets. You can never have too much closet space. Now let's head back downstairs. I just have to admire the openness of this space one more time. Can't you just imagine a Christmas tree right by the fireplace? I love it. So now let's head outside to the deck, which is also pretty spacious. On one side you can have a lounging area and on the other you can have the eating space. There's just so much room here in this home. And as I wrap up this tour, if you or anyone you know might be interested in purchasing this home or another home or want to list your home, please feel free to contact me. My information is in the bio.